Good afternoon and welcome to another Unreal tutorial. Today we'll be adding the teleport functionality to our motion controllers so we can have a bit more control over where we're going to be teleporting based on where we're facing our hands. Before we do that though, there's one thing I wanted to fix from the previous video and this is really more for if you're debugging like I like to do, uh, coming in and not using VR as much as possible and carrying on in the desktop. Uh, you'll notice that the gaze based uh, line tracing interaction isn't working anymore. And that's quite simple. Uh, we can test this. I think this is going to be because the controllers are being spawned and because they're being spawned right on the camera route, it's kind of in the way of the camera and it's probably blocking the line trace. And we can test this. If we don't spawn the motion controllers on the event begin play and try again, then you'll see that I get the standard interaction. So I think that's what the problem is going to be. We'll hook this back up so we can confirm that we can have both working. And all we want to do is if we go into our line trace function, we just want to make an array here. Um, so we're going to have an array of actors to ignore. And then all we want to do with this, we're going to make an array of things to ignore. We'll add another pin and we will ignore the left and the right motion controller. We probably only need to do one because I think it does it by class, but we're just going to make sure that it ignores everything. And then with that done, we can come back in and although we have the motion controller spawning now, we can see that we don't have that issue where uh, it's stopping the trace from working. So just a quick fix there in case anyone like myself uh, prefers to work from the desktop where possible and debug that way. You can have both the functionalities working without any issues. So to get started on the motion controller teleportation, though, we're going to go to the BP motion controller class. And the first thing I want to do is navigate over to the event graph. We can get rid of the begin play and the actor overlap. And this is where we're going to be tracing from the controller forward in the world. So this is how we're going to get the location we're going to teleport to. I want to use a branch first of all though, so I'm going to do a branch check off of here. We don't necessarily need this to happen uh, constantly. So I'm going to promote this to a variable and we'll call this B should trace. Okay, so we've got our B should trace boolean, so we're going to check now whether or not we should trace. We'll set this to false by default, and we'll toggle this on and off if we press a button, which would require us to uh, line trace forward. Now, I think we've pretty much got the code we need for the next section in our pawn class, so I'm not going to write another line trace function. Uh, we should be able to use this, just looking at it now. Uh, we'll use a line trace by channel, and yeah, so besides the camera, we've got everything we need here. I'm going to copy that out and just control C and then control V that into the event graph over here in the motion controller. We want to get our motion controller instead of the camera and that's going to be the world location that we're starting at and the world rotation that we're interested in. And then we're doing the same thing as we did in the camera. We're getting the forward vector of the motion controller this time now, a distance that we want to trace to and then we're going to set that up and trace from there. Now like we did previously we can collapse this to a function so right click on all of this, collapse to function and again we're going to call this line trace forward and we can turn the line trace forward function again into a pure function and we'll just come in and make sure that we return a value so we want to return add a return node we're going to give that the out value so we can actually check what we are hitting and that is pretty much it so we've got the same function again really and we just need that in the controller with that done we can do the same thing again so we can break this down and we can find out whether we hit something so we can promote this to a variable this time, we don't need to do a branch check. We'll call this B trace success. Just check whether or not we've actually hit something. So we'll only do this if we should be tracing anyway. So if this has been set to work. And then in fact we will use a branch. Uh, what we want to do is only do this if we've got the trace success. So we we'll use a branch from this value that we've just promoted here. Just in case we need that a bit later for anything else we do with this line trace. As we might, we might not always want to use this for teleporting. And then if we do, we are just simply going to set this location that we've got here to a variable as well. So we'll promote this to a variable and we'll call this one the teleport location. Uh, we'll call this teleport destination, in fact. And again, we'll just hook that up to the branch. Okay, so that's all we really need to do on the event tick. And then there's two very small functions that I want to make. So I'm going to add another function now. We're going to call this one activate teleporter. And in fact, all this is going to do is set the should trace to be true. And then likewise, we're going to just copy that. So I've control W'd on the activate teleporter and I'm going to call this one disable teleporter. And we're just going to set that to be false. So this is just going to toggle the line trace from being active or not. And obviously, whilst it's not active, we can't teleport. And when it is active, then we've got the chance if we hit something to teleport to it. Now, these variables are important to be storing because we're actually going to pass this back up to the pawn class. 
So that is pretty much everything we need at the moment in the motion controller class. So what we're going to do is if we compile and save this, we're going to go back to the player base and we need to set up some input to manage this. So we're going to do this from the event graph. But first of all, if we go to the project settings, the input, and we want to get some action mappings. Now we're going to need two different action mappings. So I'll just create two from the start. We're going to have one which is called teleport R pressed, like so. And the same again, but for the left hand, so teleport L pressed. And the reason being is that we can then just set the motion controller left and right buttons for the teleportation. So we get the motion controller. Uh, this is for the right hand, so we're going to get the uh, right hand motion controller, and I'm just going to use the face one button. And I'm going to get face button one again for the motion controller, but this time for the left hand. So that will take care of both of the teleport buttons being pressed. And that's just going to allow us to teleport and have that management from either of the controllers, uh, whereas some games I've noticed only let you do it from one, and that may not always be quite as uh, ergonomic as you want. So I'm going to allow it from both hands, but we do need to know which hand is in control of the teleportation. So back in the player base class now, with those we can access the input bindings we just made. So I'm going to get the teleport right first of all. So with that we've got the input action teleport right, and what we want to do is pull in the right controller. I'm going to drag off of this and activate the teleportation. So activate, and this should be setting, this should be calling this function just here. So we'll make sure that we've got access to that function by saving everything as I didn't have that there. And then try again, and there we go, we've got the activate teleport. So I just needed to do a save all. And from here, we will also, when we release this, we want to do a branch check. We'll do a check whether the trace is active or the should trace, so whether or not this should trace. If it is, then we want to promote this to a variable, and this is going to be for simplifying the next function that we'll make. So we're going to promote this to a variable, and this is going to be called the teleporting controller, and this will all make sense when we've implemented that next function. Move that up a bit, plug that in, and start adding some reroot nodes, I think. And then once we've got that, what we want to do is call a function that we haven't yet made. So I'm going to just pre-populate this down here, uh, make it a custom event for now. We'll create a custom event and we'll call this execute teleport. We will call that function. And then now that everything's been done, we can disable the teleporter again. And again, I've just tidied this up with the reroot node at the end, because what I'm going to do next is actually copy most of this out. So I'm going to get the input left or the teleport left. So teleport left pressed. And most of this is the same. All we're going to need to do is to replace the controller, which is why actually if we use another rewrite node at the front, this is going to make things a lot easier for us. Uh, maybe a little bit less tidy, but then we can just plug that in there. And that means we can take all of this logic, we can copy this down, plug that into the pressed and the released, get the left controller, and we can then just start plugging all of this into a single reroute node, which it didn't copy over and plug all of these in to that reroot node. Okay, so that is nice and simple. And this is the important thing to take in here. The reason we've used that one and uh, also set this to be the teleporting controller is now when we go down to the execute teleport, it doesn't matter which controller we've done this from, it's just set a reference to whichever controller we've pressed because they have the same type that's going to work perfectly fine. Um, and it just means that we don't have to have separate functions for each of the controllers that way. So this is where we want to do our check. We're going to get a branch check here. We want to get the teleporting controller, so the one which has been pressed, and we want to now find out whether or not that trace has been successful. So we know that we're, we've been able to do the trace, we just need to check whether or not it's hit something. So uh, we'll get the trace success, and then only if we've got a successful hit, so something that we can land on, we want to get the something called the player camera manager. So get player camera manager. And we're just going to do a small fade. This is just one of those nice to have things for VR because it makes everything a little bit less harsh. And I think it seems to make people less prone to getting motion sick. So we're going to have this fade to alpha over a second. Just keep the color black nice and simple. And uh, we'll set that to hold when finished. We're going to promote this. So we'll promote that to a variable and we'll call this the fade duration. It doesn't need to be particularly long, so if we hit compile, we can set this to something like 0.1 or maybe 0.2. Again, we can play about with this and see how that feels. And we also want to delay for that long, so we want to allow a delay whilst that's fading, and we'll keep that 
delay to be the length of the actual fade duration. And then we're gonna use an inbuilt function, which I didn't realize existed, that act a location by myself, but we can actually just pull off of here and call the teleport function, which is super handy by Epic for doing that. And what we want to get is the teleporting controller. We're gonna pull out and get the teleport location. Remember we stored this as a variable or the teleport destination. And I wanna break this down, so we'll do a break vector. And what we want to get, this is just so that we don't land inside of the floor. Uh, we're going to add 50 to the, so we're gonna do float plus a float. We're gonna add 50 to our uh, final destination. We will also make a vector from this. So make vector from our teleport vector. We'll plug that into the Z. And then we want to teleport exactly to the X and the Y location. And that's gonna be our final destination. Now another probably better and um, structured way to do this would be to get the uh, set your character up to have a capsule collider. We don't have that. Uh, that would be default in a character. And you can get the half height of a capsule collider and plug that in here. But because we don't have any collisions or anything, I've just found that hard coding for this example, at least 50 units is about the, the height that you want to be off of the floor. So you're not submerged in it. And then also something which is really important to remember inside of VR is the player is going to have an expectation of where they're looking when they get to that place. Generally, that's forward. So what we want to do again to stop people getting sick is we will get the actor rotation and we're going to plug in the, del the destination rotation to be the current rotation. So the player is going to end up where they've chosen to teleport the location, but they're still going to be look looking forward when they get there. Now, with all of that done, I'm just going to copy this because we want to do another fade. This is going to allow this to fade back in from black. So we're going to reverse this this time. So from alpha one to alpha zero, the duration can be the fade duration again. This means that like the main bulk of the movement gets hidden. They don't have to like see themselves teleporting through the world, which again can be a bit jarring. So we're gonna hide that and then let them come back into view. And then we also want to make sure we reset the teleporting controller just in case you want to use the other controller to teleport somewhere else just after this. So we've now reset everything and that is the teleportation function working. So if you just bear with me, I will pause this. I will set up the rift again and we'll give this a test just to make sure everything is as expected. Okay, so again, just needed to restart everything to activate that. There was one thing I noticed is that it all works, but it's not very clear what's happening. So I'm gonna go back into the motion controller and where we're doing this line trace forward just for testing purposes, I will set the visibility, uh, I will set the draw debug type to duration, just so that we can actually see the line of where we're gonna be teleporting. Uh, and then with that done, we can go in and I'm just going to get my headset on and give this a go. Okay, so what we should expect now is, there we go, we're tracing out of that hand. And as soon as I let go, we can see which part of the floor we're gonna land on and I will land the last place I traced, and we probably don't want to put this on for duration, and this is working from both hands. Now this looks a little bit weird for mine because I've got a very small room, and the sensors are not working properly, so the hands are kind of offset in the wrong place. Uh, but for anyone with a decent amount of space, then you should have all of this working properly, uh, but it, it just doesn't quite know where I am. But from that, we can see that everything's working as expected. The teleportation is landing exactly where it's meant to be. So a nice way to have this is just to have this drawing for one frame. It gives you a kind of persistent look to the debug line. So it almost looks like a visual representation for people. Uh, there you go. You, so you can see where I would be teleporting when I end. And of course, uh, when you start implementing this properly, you might want to make some kind of visual or shader based material for that properly, uh, like the arc that is used in the demonstration. But just for testing and so we can see exactly where we're going to land that should work perfectly fine so i'll be leaving that one here for today as always if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful then please do leave a like and share the video around that always helps if you want to be kept up to date with all of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit the little bell thing and as ever thanks for watching and i will see you all next time